Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the bundle adjustment uh, process that uh, I mentioned when I talked about the structure from motion. So this is um, a typically the last step that you do in structure from motion to get uh, better estimates from the uh, pose of your camera at different um, capturing locations and orientations as well as uh, better estimates of the locations of the point that uh, you matched right between different frames those 3d points uh, because you can have accumulated error as i explained yeah you also use this in slam as well in my future videos when i get to talk about slams i explain that because the slam is very similar to structure from motion and it's uh, subjected to drift as well and accumulated error. The pictures and the equations here are coming from two papers. The first one is error minimization or minimization in three-dimensional model reconstruction using sparse bundle adjustment and the levenberg marquald algorithm on stereo camera pairs by L. Bondi et al. The second one is sparse uh, bundle adjustment, a softer package for generic bundle adjustments, as you can see, by M. Lorakis et al. So uh, everything belongs to these two papers, okay? And these are uh, those uh, basically first basic uh, founding papers on bundle adjustment. So what is it? As I said, it's a simultaneous refining of the 3D coordinates of the points that you captured and you're trying to find them and reconstruct the um, what we call the structure of the scene, right? And also the estimated pose, which is the position and orientation of the cameras that you use to capture. Sometimes you also will include the intrinsic parameters of the cameras as well. So you assume that the cameras are not calibrated or the pictures are not uh, taken by your camera. You just found them from like web or something and you try to estimate those as well. Here, we exclude those, but in general, you can put them in as well. And in general, you can show that uh, this bundle adjustment is a sparse geometric parameter estimation problem. And as I said, we typically do it as the last stage of uh, structure from motion. So what do we do here? Uh, again, this picture is coming from the first paper. So here is the object that you try to get the structure of it, right? The sh shape of it. Or, or it could be any area that you're trying to create a map of it in the slam. But here we talk mostly about structure from motion. So you have a bunch of uh, points, right? A bunch of feature points on uh, points that you can easily describe or better describe like this one. And your goal is what? Your goal is to project them, as you did, onto these uh, camera planes. So you got these projection points, okay? And uh, then you don't really know where these cameras are if you even set the first one at origin with an identical uh, identity matrix rotation. You don't know the T and R for the second one, for the third one, all the way. And the problem is when you try to say, hey, this point here and this point are referring to the same point. So when I feature match them, uh, ideally, I should get exactly these two points as belonging to the same point after I do ransack. The problem is when you detect these feature points and you describe them, maybe you have a little bit drift so maybe instead of this point p you get this point p your algorithm detect the feature point with a little bit small shift because of resolution because the errors in the feature uh, detectors or descriptors right and here maybe similar a little bit shift here and when you do that because of this error in detection of these features your parameters for position and uh, orientation of these cameras will also be what will also be shifted from the reality 
So you have this accumulation of error that is happening, and the goal of this bundle adjustment is to uh, basically see if it can do a better job and get these um, estimations, which are a little bit off, as close as possible to the ones that actually should be calculated. How does it do it? It does a reprojection and calculates the error, okay, and then tries to minimize the reprojection error. How? So what do we do here? So what you have is this. Uh, let's let's go with the note. Let's start with the notation. So let's say here you have. N what, let's say you have N 3D points like this P that you have captured pictures from. So you have N 3D points, each one has X, Y, and Z, so you have N times 3 unknowns here. And these N points are seen in M frames or M camera views, okay? So now you have what, 3 plus 3 times M unknowns if the intrinsic matrices are known. You have three for orientation, and you have three for what? For the translation matrix. So you have 6M unknowns here, again, if we know the intrinsic matrix K for each one of them. And here, again, these uh, three are going to be your X, Y, and Z of these points. Okay, so totally, you can see that three times N plus six times M is the total of what is the total of unknowns that you have and you want to better estimate them. Okay. The other thing you have is small xij here is what? Is the projection of the i 3D point on the j image. Okay. So if this point is like what? P1 and this frame is frame 2, then the projection of P1 on frame 2, if we show it with the small p here, we call it small P12, okay? P-I-J, I stands for the index of the point in 3D, and J stands for the index of the frame, okay? And this is what you detect. This is what is detected by your algorithm. Now, whether your algorithm is SIFT or SURF or any feature detector method, this is what your feature detector has detected and they matched. Good? Also, we need another parameter here. Not all of these points are visible to all of the frames, necessarily. Some of these points might not be seen in all of the frames. Like here, this point that is on the back of this cube might not be visible to this first frame. So here we define another parameter, okay, which here we call it new ij or vij. It, to me, it's most like, let's say call it vij. This vij is what? This is a binary variable, which is 1 if point i is visible in image j and it's 0 if it is not visible. Okay, so here I have defined for you what? Some uh, notations. Also, those uh, three angles for the rotation matrix and the three elements of the translation vector for camera J, okay, or view J, we show them all those six parameters that I mentioned up here for you. This six, I combine them and I call them vector AJ. And the three X, Y, Z's that I have for point I, I call it vector B, I. Okay, so the unknowns are these A, J, and B, I. The known entity is this X, I, J, which my method is detected. New uh, V, I, J, right? And then I explain what is Q, what is D. <clears throat> so, what is the goal here? The goal is... We reproject, we reproject or we predict the projection of what? The projection of that point xij or xi onto frame j. Okay, so we predict point i onto image j 
by what we know from our uh, computer vision knowledge and our current estimates of A and B, A, J, and B, I, we call that predicted projection, we call it Q. Okay, or some other notation that you see down here, you might call it X hat IJ. So you might call it X hat IJ or Q. This is the prediction that you might have if you have an estimate for A, I, and B, A, J, and B, I. This is the one that your algorithm, SIFT, or SURF, or whatever, they have actually detected. And you want to what? You want the difference between this XIJ and this X hat or QIJ to be minimal. So you define a distance function, D, a D function between these two vectors. Most of the time, this D is simply what? The subtraction of the two squared. So it could be a sum of the elements squared. So most of the time, this D of whatever you want to call it, this D of let's say uh, z is simply what is just the uh, norm of z squared okay norm 2 squared so in this case it could be just x hat ij minus x ij norm 2 squared and we have to sum it up some of some add basically add all of these uh, error square terms over all points and over all frames and multiply all of these uh, squared errors by vij so if a point is not seen on a frame we just simply add a zero for it so this is my total cost function that i need to minimize by what by getting appropriate estimates for a and b okay so this is my cost function here And um, again, here, uh, this uh, entity xij minus x hat ij minus xij, or uh, the opposite of that here, you can see, we call it what? We call it the error, and showing it with this uh, e here, or error, down here in this notation. So the goal is to minimize sum of, as you can see, this cost function is sum of squared errors, right? We want to minimize that with respect to A and B. But the problem is this Q of A and B is not a linear operation, okay? You know, if I have a point, right, if I want to take it to a, a specific frame, I use the perspective pro uh, projection. Correct? Yeah? And if you watch this video of mine under the same playlist, Computer Vision Image Processing, which says camera intrinsic and extrinsic parameters and camera calibration, you see that even if I know all of my intrinsic parameters, I still have to deal with nonlinearity. The first one is here, this division by the depth, Z. Okay? That is the biggest nonlinearity that you have. So this Q in general is what? It's a nonlinear operation. Therefore, what you need to do is nonlinear optimization. And in this case, uh, you can simply do a list of squares. Okay, so you need to do a nonlinear list squares optimization, which is the traditional method for solving what? The bundle adjustment. And you can see that over here too, that I mentioned nonlinear list square algorithm. Now, typically, the method of choice is the levenberg marquardt algorithm, which is a combination of the gradient descent and the Gauss-Newton, or the GD and GNA algorithms, okay, when the guesses for A and B are far from their optimal value, it is closer to the gradient descent, okay, because gradient descent is a slow method, but more stable, and when you get closer to the final guesses, you get closer to the Gauss-Newton, which is a faster method, but uh, it can go unstable. So it is a combination of the two. If you want to know more about levenberg marquardt you can watch my other video here that I have. And that is under the playlist of um, uh, machine learning, as far as I remember. 
And uh, this one is one of my popular videos, seems like. People like it, and I explained very clearly what is Levenberg Marquardt and how it works. It has a tuning parameter lambda here in our notation. We're going to use mu instead. And uh, when this mu is changed, when this mu gets very large, you get close to the gradient descent. When this mu goes small, you get closer to Gauss-Newton. And in each uh, update loop, based on whether the cost function that some squared error goes down or goes up, you're going to change this mu typically by an order of magnitude, either uh, increase it or decrease it. Okay, so if you want to know about this update uh, equation of levenberg marquardt again, watch that video so you know what uh, is it that we are discussing here. So, so far I told you what is reprojection error. Reprojection error means right now I have some guesses for A and B. Using that A and B, which involves the rotation matrix translation vector and the uh, guesses for the XYZ of the 3D point, I get a, a guess of where the point should be, point I in frame J, and then I look at what I detected, I look at the error between them, square it, and make sure that that point appears on that frame, sum all the squares, and based on that, I try to what? Um, uh, reduce that error and get better updates for A and B. This whole process is the bundle watt adjustment, okay? So, now, one of the things that you probably can easily see is that this process is going to be very computationally demanding. Why? Because as I said, the minimum number of parameters you need to estimate is 3n plus 6m. And the number of points, m the number of frames. Okay? And how many equations have you, do you have to satisfy? How many nonlinear is? Because the ultimate goal is this x hat ij be what equal to xij. So ultimately, you have to have this, right? How many of them do you have? You can have at most n times m. Because if you have n points and you can see all of them in all m frames, then you're going to have n times m of these equations. Now, necessarily, not all points are seen in all frames. So this is the maximum number of equations you have to satisfy. And you have a quite a bit smaller number of unknowns, 3n plus m, but this number can be very large if you are to find a dense structure approximation. Okay, so if it's just a simple object with 10, 20, 50 points, yes, but if it's a really good scan like you do with your cell phones and it gives you a relatively good shape of the object you are scanning, then the number of points is typically has to be very large. You cannot reconstruct an object with only 10, 20, 100 points. Okay, that is going to be a very, very bad estimate. Okay, and although, yeah, you might go around the uh, object and maybe, I don't know, every 30 degrees you get one picture or every, I don't know, 10 degrees, okay, if you are going very slow. So you might get at most 36 frames, but if you want a good estimate, this should be in... Uh, thousands or tens of thousands of points, right? So I don't know, 5,000 points or more. So you have a good tessellation. And now you can see how crazy number of unknowns you need to have. So here you're looking at something like 15, 16,000 unknowns and up to what? 180,000 um, equations to be satisfied. So, in general, levenberg marquardt is going to be extremely computationally demanding. It's not about the levenberg marquardt Any other algorithm that you use to solve this large optimization problem is going to be slow. It's not just levenberg marquardt Now, levenberg marquardt is quite a bit fast and stable. Still, with this huge amount of computation, it is going to become uh, quite a bit demanding. So is there any way to make this a little bit more efficient? Yes, there are many different versions of bundle adjustment 
that are uh, studied in the literature and uh, basically suggested. The one that I'm going to talk about is called the sparse bundle adjustment because this problem is sparse, as I'm going to show you. And this sparse bundle adjustment, or SBA, tries to take advantage of the sparsity of this problem and basically convert it into uh, something like this at the end of the day. Let me show you. Okay where you have these uh, matrices that are block, uh, not block diagonal or something, but there are lots of zeros in them. And the solution of that can be actually very effective and very fast. Okay, so let's see how this SBA is going to operate for us. So for SBA here, we use some notations. And uh, the vector of all A's and all B's, all of the unknowns, I call it vector P. So this P is the ultimate unknown to be found. I merge them all into P. And all of the projected points onto the frames, I put them into matrix X. So here X11 means projection of point 1 onto frame 1. X and 1 means what? Projection of point n onto frame 1. X and m is projection of point n onto frame m. I transpose all of these vectors, put them next to each other, and transpose the whole thing. So this x is given, the p is unknown. And we, using the estimates that we have for a and b, we're going to get reprojection of the x. We call it x hat. And the goal is to minimize the difference between x and x hat. So x hat is the reprojected point, which is clearly a function of a's and b's, or the function of p, of course a nonlinear function. And if we call the error here, then the uh, levenberg marquardt update uh, equation is this one here. J transpose sigma of x inverse j plus mu i, i is the identity matrix delta equals j transpose sigma x inverse e. E, I told you that's the error. Delta is the amount of update that we need to have for uh, the parameters A and B. Mu is that tuning parameter. J here is the Jacobian matrix, which we're going to discuss. And sigma X is the covariance matrix for the observations. And this first term here, J transpose sigma X inverse J, is what we call in literature the Mahalanobis distance. Okay. So this is my update equation. If I find the uh, left-hand side in parentheses, inverted, multiply by right-hand side, I get my what? Deltas, which is how much I need to change the parameters P. So here, let's see why this problem is sparse. Okay, to show you that, I want to look at a specific scenario just as a demonstration. And let's say here we only have four points and three views. Typically, the number of points is way more than the number of views. But here, let's say they are close. And what happens here? The thing is this. The uh, projection, the reprojection x hat ij does not depend on ak or bk when j is not equal to k. Why is that? What does it mean? Remember, I was for the point, J was for the camera. Okay, so XIJ means projection of point I onto frame J. Does it depend on the parameters of what? On the parameters of another camera? Or does it depend on the coordinates of another point? Remember, what is A, what is B here, right? A was what, if you remember? A are the parameters of the camera. These are the points. So uh, I know that the projection of point 1 on camera 2 or frame 2, does it depend on the parameters of camera 3? No. Does it depend on the coordinates of point 5? No. So partials of x hat ij with respect to both ak and bk, as long as j is not equal to k or i is not equal to k, that is equal to zero. And that is what makes this Jacobian here, j, which is the derivatives of the projections x or x hat really in this case, with respect to p, it makes a lot of zeros here. 
So here I have, remember, four points and three what? Views. And if you look at this guy, look at the dimension of it, you have what? You have basically these blocks of three by three here, right? Which are partials of x, i, j hat with respect to a, j. These are the uh, derivatives of projections with respect to the camera parameters. You have four of these three by threes on the left side. And then on the right side, you have what? You have these basically three by four blocks. These are the derivatives of x hat ij with respect to b's. Okay. And again, you have four of these three by fours. So if you look at this Jacobian, what's the dimension of this? Yes, you are right. There are 12 rows and there are seven columns. So you have 84 elements, but if you count how many of them are non-zero, you can see that I have like 12 here and then another 12 there, right? Correct? So out of 84 entries, Easily, only what? 24 of them are non-zero. The rest of them are all zero. And that makes this problem definitely what? Sparse problem. Because when these Jacobians are all zero, the corresponding update equations for delta are also going to be zero. You see this Jacobian is everywhere. Okay, so the corresponding update equations will be what? will be uh, sparse as well. So, to show you that here, uh, if we, uh, and we can show that, if this um, covariance matrix that we have here, this sigma of x, if this is block diagonal, okay, like this, which it should be block diagonal because these points, we assume they are independent from each other, right? Okay. The location of a point does not depend on location of another point, so it's block diagonal. And we show it with this, sigma x11, sigma x12, and so on, right? And then the summation of, with definitions of A and B, as I said earlier for you, with these definitions of A and B, if I call Aij transpose sigma xij uh, inverse times Aij, summation goes from j1 to what? to the number of, of course, four, which in this case is what for us? The number of points in general, this can go to N, and V is Bij transpose sigma xij inverse Bij, J goes from one to three, which is the number of frames. And um, your W is uh, Aij transpose sigma xij inverse Bij, we call it Wij, then equation one, this uh, update equation, will become of this format. Look. So this is how your equation one is now going to be. Or if you compact it, if you put all of these W's into one giant matrix W, if you put this uh, diagonal block matrix as U star, if you put this block diagonal here, let me clean these blue parts. If you uh, call this portion here, that V star. And if you uh, call this one here, which are those same W's, but transpose of them, W transpose, then U star W, W transpose V star times delta, and delta you can break it down into deltas of A's and deltas of B's. The camera parameters and the points, like this, it's going to be the error on the right side, where error can be error for uh, A and error for B. Okay, this top portion of error, you can call it EA and the bottom portion EB. And if that's the case, then we can easily get the solution from here directly for delta A. What we need is to basically form this matrix here. U star minus W, V star uh, inverse W transpose and find this right hand side here. 
EA minus W be a star inverse AEB, and then multiply the inverse of this guy by that. That will give us the amount of update for camera parameters. And once you have that delta A, you plug it into the second equation where everything is known and this V star is known. And if you invert this again and multiply by that, this will give you what? Delta B. Okay, so you see, instead of doing this, uh, because you need to find all these deltas, and here we use this sparsity, and by forming these U's, V's, and W's from here, you're not going to solve all of them at the same time. You break it into two smaller sets. You decompose the problem into two smaller sets, and this makes the solution of this delta A and delta B a lot faster. Okay, it's always easier to solve a uh, two three by three sets of equations instead of one six by six. Okay, and this is the essence of what this algorithm called the sparse bundle adjustment or SBA. So uh, just to remind you, um, if you watched the video I recently published on the structure from motion, right, and I explained that, the last step of the MATLAB code that I showed you on MathWork website, if you look, the last stage of the structure from motion was what? Bundle adjustment. So you can define all camera poses and what? 3D world points. So if you go down here, right, if you go down, then you can see what? Look here, it says refine the world points and camera poses. MATLAB actually does have this built-in function bundle adjustment, okay? And what you need to give to it is your points, the actual points that you got from your um, uh, uh, feature detectors, the tracks, which keep track of which point is in which frame to give you those VIJs, the camera poses, that you have come up with so far, if you want to estimate the intrinsics, you have to give them the estimates of the intrinsics too, and then whether to say the points are undistorted or not. Okay, so here it says points undistorted, means these are good frames. I don't need to do rectification of the frames and get rid of the uh, lens distortion in the frames before being able to use them. These are good frames, no uh, distortion removal is needed. And this bundle adjustment, if you go and uh, look at it in uh, MATLAB help, right? You see, it explains what, it explains for you that this is what it does, okay? And if you want in MATLAB, you can, uh, so here you can see this example here shows you that before refinement, the purple points and the purple cameras were what we thought are the actual structure and motion, but after we did bundle adjustment, we found that actually the points are at the green locations and the cameras are also at the green locations. So this is a final refinement you do after you found your initial guesses on what your initial guesses on X, Y points and the camera poses or even intrinsics from a structure from motion formulas that I showed you last time in that video. Okay, and it does a final optimization. And there are lots of different parameters here. You can see absolute tolerance, max iteration, relative tolerance, point undistorted. There are lots of things that you need to tell it. You see the solver, the default is what? Sparse linear algebra. Okay, so you see that it is using the sparse algorithm. So hopefully this uh, video was useful to you. You learned some basics and theory about the bundle adjustment, and uh, you understand the last step of structure from motion. As I said, it is also used in SLAM as well in robotics. So thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.